Welcome to the Model Car Hobby Headquarters Fun Podcast with your host, Luca C. Now, here he is, Luca C. Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? Well, here's another on podcast, and I'm bringing a return guest, I think, for the first time. Or might have done it before in the past, I don't know. But I just want to bring my buddy, Mark Batson, that's Hobby Dude 007, back on. And we're just, you know, we don't really have anything else to talk about but model cars. And thought we'd bring you guys along. So, Is there anything uh, else to talk about? <laughs> there's really nothing else to talk about. I say, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> and yeah, so... Yeah, man. Yeah, heck yeah. And also a big thing, you know, like I'm sure you all know about is a whole group of us did these 40 Fords. And uh, Mark is pretty much the, the guy here that uh, instigated it all, <laughs> which was a really cool thing. I think it really created some really cool bonding and content for all of us and, and kind of started a, a really neat group that we ended up kind of creating. huh? Yeah, we did. And, you know, uh our, our Facebook page for the content creators grew from, I think we had, when we started that, we had what, nine? Maybe uh, nine, yeah. Nine members somewhere in there. Yeah. And now we're up to, is it 30? Something like that. Yeah. Last I checked, 27. Uh, and now you think about 30. Another content creators jumping into the build as well as. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, if they want other projects and they didn't get into this one, you know, I'm sure they'll get into the next one or something. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because uh, are you in the same um, attitude as I am? As I think. Every September, we should do an, do one. Yeah, yeah. I oh, would absolutely. love to. That'd be fun. Absolutely. You know, uh, and, the, I've, and the, I've already got one or two kits in mind that I think will be challenging because they're very low parts counts. But you know, this this Facebook group is not just you and I. It's just it's all of us. So yeah, uh, maybe we can all come up with uh, some <laughs> ideas. Maybe vote on it. I don't know. Wait, yeah, we, we will. Think. You know, the one thing that that I kind of was think of sticking to a theme, and we can have each content creator every year it'd be his turn to pick it is kind of like what you how you started it is is the the inspiration was that this was a kit that you know the 40 ford was a kit that both you and i really love but the, you know i did that video and i kept gushing about this kit for so many other videos that i love yeah, it so much yeah. that was the inspiration so it's like maybe we do a kit that that you really felt that way about <laughs> and, and, and maybe bg and and James test well that's not worry about James well, in my case <laughs> in my case it was it was just one of those things where going back to the 1960s that was one of the first model kits I ever built oh yeah and I built the sedan and the the coupe and the sedan and the coupe and finally got a sedan delivery and uh, I think I've done about three sedan deliveries over time but I've done tons of those other ones so oh yeah they yeah came out, you know I'd get one I probably got three or four maybe more in the collection still back there. Oh yeah, I still like to do my dad's Street Thirty Nine. Oh yeah, sedan two door sedan. Uh, sometime too. Oh but, yeah, yeah. I I tell you, I'm definitely. I got some more forties. I enjoyed that build so much, and and remembered why I enjoyed that kit so much. Is I definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a stash of them, but I'm actually looking to buy a few more. <laughs> and yeah, and you know, as content creators, we kind of um, what's the word I'm looking for here. Um, talk amongst yourselves while I figure okay. this out. So anyways, we are, yes. um, anyway, it's one of those things that, that I enjoyed it, not only watching the other content creators and the directions they were going, which every now and then would sway me to go, oh, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or, or a cool thing with the interior or something like that. But to watch the people. And the biggest reason we as content creators do this is to help the hobby grow and, and, maybe and inspire push ourselves. Yeah. Push ourselves to step it up a little bit and yeah, to definitely. see other people that aren't content creators jumping in and building 44s or sharing their 44 builds. That was, that was inspiring too, because I saw some stuff that made me kind of think back. I couldn't make up my mind. If you remember on what color those wheels should be. Oh I yeah. Do the Steelies. I was going to do the black. Then I was going to, I was thinking about white. Then I was thinking, oh man, these, <laughs> these maroon look so good. And I had, to, that was the way I was going to go. And then when I did my mock-up and stuck the uh, black ones back on there, I'm like, are you kidding? 
Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> now, let me tell you, you widening those tires is one of the reasons I've made the change to a bigger tire in the back. Oh, really? Yeah, because I was cool. going to do the, uh, I was actually going to do uh, just all four of the stock wheels. And then I was going to use the Firestones uh, out of the parts pack, AMT parts pack. But those things were just as narrow. But when I saw those those fatties on yours, I was like, oh, I kind of like that. So yeah, that that know. that was really pleased how that. All, I ended up. I've had so many of those BF Goodrich tires. I didn't like them, and when I did that, and then also kind of dressed them up a bit and sanded the the sanded the uh, uh, tread down a bit. It looked better that i've gathered a whole bunch of those now lately i've had some uh one of my buddies in our club said hey i got a bunch of those here you can have them so i'm gonna be widening a whole bunch of them and, and using them on on some of my next couple of builds because now i you know i love i'm a i love bf goodrich i just think they're like the, the, the perfect tire on a on a muscle car or a hot rod and oh so, yeah yeah so, and there's never been really good you know at least i used to not think there was any good scale versions of them i think it was in 72 73 that's uh the bf goodrich was all i had on my uh oh yeah car for a while the white letter and they just tough looking tires oh they are they are I, I had them on my chevelle i mean i have modern ones on both my mustangs have bf goodrich but they're more modern but uh um i i just love bf goodrich and just you know it's a thing. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. But you know, and then the way they the 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 letters are raised so perfect. They they look a little high when you first look at them, but once you put some white on them, they look perfect. They I really am pleased at how they looked mm -hmm. on that car. And again, I think I got another build plan. I'll tell you about in a little later here in this in this uh, thing that. Uh, um, uh, I'm definitely going to put BF Goodrich's on. Uh -huh. Yeah, that one should be a good one. Now, also on widening them like that. Yeah, I yeah. Of, I have a set of uh, Drag 500 Firestones that I need to be a little bit wider for a project. Oh, yeah. And your technique's going to be the one that I'm going to use there, too. Uh, oh, cool. I'm, I'm glad it helped. A lot of people were, were liking that. Um, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that worked out really good. And I'll tell you, quite honestly, I've never done it before. And I just, well, I'm going to give this a try. A try. You know, it, it seemed to work good in my head. So I said, I'll turn the camera on. Might as well. <laughs> if it works it's out or if it's a disaster, it's still good content. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, but my, my biggest problem with doing something like that was always, okay, what am I going to use to glue them back together? Super glue it sounds like the thing to do, but is it going to do this? Can you use epoxy? Is it going to, yeah, how it's going to react to it? Is it yeah. going to hold because of the vinyl? You know, is it going to hold? And, and sometimes when you don't know, you just don't do. Yeah, and exactly. I, exactly. I be that way, but sometimes if I'm not sure it's going to work, I won't, I won't even try. Yeah. Um, I, and my mother is like, when I was telling her that one day, she said, well, why don't you do such and such? And I said, there's no way I can do that. It won't work. Yeah. And if you've tried it before, it won't know, but it won't work. But the thing is, if you don't try it, you really don't know. No, nope. uh, no. Nope. And that, uh, that's that's why, you know, and I, a lot of my videos have been something that I've thought about, and I'm going to give it a try. I just did one today that's kind of really worked out. I was crossing my fingers that I debunked something that I can't wait to put this video out. And, uh, um, yeah, it all worked out, and I'm like, how cool! So far, everything's worked out when I've when I've taken a shot. And I'm gonna videotape it. If it turns into a disaster, who cares? But I like doing that; it's fun. But you're right. I, I wondered if it would work. Everything that I came up with when I did it there was the first time I ever did it, and everything worked. And I did find CA glue worked out perfect for those tires. I mm -hmm. first put it on the halves and got them together right where I wanted them. And then, you know, and then, you know, you, you throw the accelerator on them. And then I took CA glue inside and kind of just lined the whole, whole, you know. I didn't think about that. Either. Yeah. And then, and then threw the accelerator in there real quick, just to give it, you know, a little more strength. And, you know, I put those things back onto that, that little jig I have that spins the tires and did the sanding and everything and pushed on them, popped wheels in and out of them messed with them they never they never came apart they worked out great 
they look great. And um, so that's that's how I'm going to do it. And again, that's great content. And every one of us learn from it. Uh, well, exactly, exactly. And, and I know a lot of people asked a question about the type of glue I was using. So hopefully if they're watching this video now, they know. And they, they've already seen the car worked out. So that worked yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, do what you want. That that's fine. Every, that's the beauty of it all. I mean, if you feel more comfortable with whatever glue you're thinking of, but it worked for me, so hopefully that helps people out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really how it rolls. Now these forty Fords have been an awesome yeah. build for me. They, uh, it it kind of pushed what I wanted to do, but watching everybody else and what they were going to do is, mm -hmm. um, and and you know. Fred Henry did that awesome motion oh. runner. And, yeah. And I was like, man, that's the perfect car for that. Yeah. Uh, think about the era and all that stuff. And I thought, man, what a perfect car for that. And he killed it. Um, that semi gloss to kill the, the, any reflections at night and that kind of moon running. <laughs> that was, perfect. yeah, totally. And look at what Matthew did. Oh, oh man. Oh. See, you know, I had, a, I had a, I had a, yeah, I had a conversation with him uh, about that, and he was kind of like really stepping out of his zone. He never kit bashed that heavy yeah. before. Because him and I had a conversation when I was in Atlanta, you know, hanging out, um, that uh, he, I asked him, you know, why didn't you bring any models? He goes, well, I just kind of do out of the box, and it's not up to these guys' level. And that, I was out of heck with that. Bring a model. Yeah, bring a model. And uh, he goes, I don't know if I'm ever going to, you know, I'm just going to build out of the box. I go, I don't know, dude. I bet you you'll you'll re reach out and start doing kit bashing and detailing and crazy stuff. And while we were there, he was talking to the guy who made the wheels for him and sent mm -hmm. him pictures. And he got all excited about those wheels. That was really the catalyst wow. for that. that. And um, when he when when he started going on this, he told me. He doesn't think he would have ever, uh, I hope, Matthew, I hope you don't mind I'm saying this and, and busting this out, but I think this was a cool thing he said, is I don't think I would have ever taken that leap into the next level and doing a kit bash that much uh, if it wasn't for that he had all of us, how we were all kind of privately, Everybody was all you guys out there never saw, we were all talking and sending each other pictures of what we're doing, and uh if it helped him out and he felt real comfortable with that comfortable with a group of guys he was you. comfortable with and so what, so that that's cool did, yeah watching what he did with uh tubbing that thing and oh and man he yeah he did to it that engine kit bashing like that and i sent him in his comments on that thing when he posted it dude you need to be kit bashing a lot yeah this yeah it was awesome and i i do understand that he doesn't want to rob from one kit to do this or rob from, <laughs> i think he's, he's, hey, he's, Matt, he's I, i'm gonna freak him out i have taken stuff out of five or six kits to build one <laughs> um, oh man you know what if you got it if you can picture it here do it yeah uh, exactly because man you blew that matt I'll say you blew it out of the water, man. That absolutely, thing awesome. absolutely. And everybody that did put their own twist on it. They did something unique. I don't know of a single one of the forties that that were in the group build, and and some of the the folks that were just showing off theirs, whether they were content creators or not. There were unique things in every single yeah. one that were awesome. Absolutely, awesome. absolutely. Great, great stuff. And, absolutely. Uh, of course, that locks into our minds and mm -hmm. for the next project that we're going to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Great, great stuff. Can I change the subject a second? Yes. Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> I was happy. <laughs> you and I met for the very first time. We've been talking and been buddies online for a while. Six months, more. Yeah. And then we get to meet face to face. And of course, let me tell you, Matthew. Then let's yeah. see, there's um, Frank with Frizzo's, GI Modeler, uh, Fred Henry. Oh, man, I'm going to leave somebody out and I'm going to fill Brian out. from uh, Got oh, Brian. Fuels. Uh, Brian BG, uh, and then BG, there's Brian yeah. from Got Fuels. And, uh, oh, let's see. See, I Munchkin started man. That, and now I'm going to feel like an idiot because <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving. Somebody. I know. There was, I, I know. It's, it's hard and to then, say. And then I reconnected with guys that uh, between COVID I haven't seen in several years. Oh, yeah. Uh, my buddy Clay Kemp. Uh, yeah. 
love him to death. Uh, known Clay since I think it was 2004. Yeah. When we first met, uh, we we kind of seen each other online before that, but we first met in 2004 in Atlanta, and so reconnected with a lot of the other guys. But to get to meet you guys, and and uh, Amanda was looking at some of the videos that I took when I was picking on you. <laughs> Uh, there at the show, she said, "Boy, you just mean, aren't you?" <laughs> I said, "Hey, you know, if you can joke with somebody like that, you yeah. know, you know, you love them." <laughs> oh heck yeah, man! It was ah, oh, geez, it was so much fun. I had a great time, and then meeting your brother, I had I had a lot of great time, and your mom too. I had a heck of a conversation oh, yeah. with a your surprise. mom. Yeah, what yeah. a surprise! Friday night, we're in yeah. there, and I think I was talking to. I think it was BG. I think it was Brian. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, in there, and all of a sudden, I just said, "Excuse me, just a minute." I said, uh, "That's my brother." And I pointed <laughs> my brother, and all of a sudden, and then I go, "And my mother." <laughs> <laughs> they rolled down. That was so cool. So they rolled down to to support, and I tell you, that was that was really cool. That was a lot of fun to see. Oh yeah, I yeah. I've the... met him before, of course. But oh yeah, yeah you <laughs> have. I felt like I had. I I had such a good time, and then that. You know, I had to put it in my video that time when you and your brother were messing around with the, with the penny and. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the things that Amanda said. You're mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> oh yeah, that was gosh, that was such good times. Um, what an experience and meeting. But the thing was, is when I met you and I met Matthew and and Tim, everybody. It's like I felt like we had met before. It didn't feel like a first meeting. You know, no, we all didn't. been talking, it but it was just so, so exciting. And we all just had such a good time. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what's great about these model shows. And uh, I, I definitely will be in Atlanta next year because I'm addicted. That was, a, that was a, uh, uh, what a whatever, a, an overload or a, a, <laughs> yeah, well, I well, can't I think of I'm still going to see, I'm still going to see you in March, right? Very good possibility. I, I am not a hundred percent right yet. I'm waiting to find out. I'm going to know by the end of this month if I can if I can truly okay. make it out there. I'm really hoping to. I really, I'm really that is gonna a, to, I'm really going to try to make that one too. Yeah, I will keep you informed on that. That would be fun. That would be really fun. And even like if we could meet up in the middle of that week and go uh, meet up over at the Petty Museum oh, would be yeah. a ball. Yeah, we had talked about that too. Meeting at uh, Petty's Garage in the museum. Yeah, definitely. Old Dennis uh, and I, I would roll do down that there at least twice a year. And of course, with COVID, I didn't do it at all in uh, twenty. I only went once in twenty one, and uh, I think we'll try to do it twice. This yeah. Year. Yeah, but, I because uh, uh, every time you go, they've rearranged, <coughs> they've got something new, they've swapped something out. Uh, I've got some pictures in the past. The last two times I've been there, they didn't have them. But you remember the STP turbine cars? Yes. They've had two different ones of the original turbine cars on display, too. Really? And, oh, that uh, would be cool to see. Uh, oh, yeah. I've got pictures <laughs> from when they were there before. But uh, um and just outside of Randleman, I'm going to be posting this, so everybody's going to get a little preview. Um, just outside of Randleman is a little town called Sophia, North Carolina, and that mm -hmm. is where the Roy Hill Drag Racing School is. Ooh. And, uh, Ooh. Yeah, just down the road a little bit. Yeah. And I've, got a, I've gone through a tour with Roy Hill himself, took Amanda and I through the school, oh, and cool. uh, you get to see the pro stalkers and uh, the – Top fuel uh, training cars, two seat front. Yeah, seat the two sheet rear. ones. Oh, oh, that would be man. so cool. Um, but uh, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do a video on a tour of Roy Hill Racing. Yeah. Uh, but I've got a video I'm going to put out in the next day or so. I'm going to try to do a video of um, this is some stuff I would like to get done this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start off. The first video will be about some drag racing cars, vintage drag racing stuff I'd like to get done this year. Then I'll do one, probably the stock cars. And that's, that's my first love. That's my passion. Yeah. I have other things. I have some tribute stuff that I want to finish for Ricky couch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember you telling last, me that the last major thing he did was a, a Corvette custom and I'm doing a Corvette custom. That's kind of a tribute to him. Um, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but you know, I've, I've worked on and off for about five years on the thing. Oh, wow. Really? And it's, um, it, it's, it's it's unique, but it, it's I'm trying to do it in the style that Ricky would do it. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and Ricky's mind was so unique. That's tough to do, man. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I know what you mean. I kind of got one sitting in the, in the wings right now. I've been thinking of getting back on. I have, it's a tribute build, but it was a buddy build. When Frank passed away, him and I were in the middle of a buddy build <clears throat> and it was, we were building, it was all to just take some cool pictures, but we were building two of the same type. It was a flat nose Monte Carlo pre, uh-oh, uh-oh, something's happening. Something's happening. Do you see it on your screen? Oh, geez. We have, we have an interruption here. I was getting ready to say somebody else is jumping in and I think it's that. Where's my BG button? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you got, you got, I'm wearing the right hat. He's having trouble getting in. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me, let me get my button on. <laughs> BG, are you there? Are you there? He's cut, he's cut. Oh, oh, oh. I guess you got sunspots or something there, bud. And we can't hear you, but we're starting to see you. He's fading in and out. No, 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 no sound. How about some sign language? <laughs> <laughs> oh well. You think he could, you think he could get it to work, bud? <laughs> Push any key. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh man, this would be fun. Yeah, really. No, I've, I've have never had uh, multiples on on the show. This then we could have three people telling lies. Oh, that's always good. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously you can hear us though, huh? Oh, you can hear us, so so we we better not talk bad about them. <laughs> can you hear us? Brian, can you hear us? He, he can hear us. I don't know if there's anything from my end. I muted myself. All right. Earth to Major Tom. <laughs> ah, no, there's <laughs> nothing on my side. Uh, you, you, know, fiddle, you fiddle with that. <laughs> I, I, I lost you. I think... He, you texted me. I still have him. If you got him, do you have me? Link. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he can't. So I'm not sure. Oh, wait, I think I might have figured it out. Uh... Hey, do you see me now? Oh, no. Oh, well. Do you see me at all? Um, I, I'm, I'm seeing all three of you, but. I lost, I lost y'all. Do you see me? Nope. There no? you are. Okay, oh, okay. There, there we go. There we go. I'm not touching anything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh well, we tried it. That was a cool surprise. Definitely. Hey, he's he's calling. Hold on a second. Howdy, howdy. Hi. Hey, uh, sorry about that. No problem. That was. Um, I think it's uh, something on my end because I was messing with microphones uh, last month, and now I have no audio on my computer. So. Neato. Way to go. So, oh, uh, no. I'm just going to hit the bow out, and I apologize for messing up your video. Ah, oh, not even. No, not at You're all. Never a mess up on a video. Oh, we were, we were getting ready to have some fun. Mark, it's good seeing you, buddy. We'll talk to you a little bit later on. All right. You take bye, care. Buddy. All right. Bye now. Bye. Ah, oh, that would have been fun. Yeah, we'll try it again some other day. I got to get, let me see. There we go. I had oh, uh, that same thing happen not long ago where, uh, in fact, 
Tuesday. The day oh, really? The they're going to meet. Uh, the audio would not work. The speakers, the speakers, or the mic. And I went in. Yeah. Uninstalled it, reinstalled it, and then we were okay. Isn't that always one of this? This this technology has really made things wonderful for all of us, but yeah, frustrating when too. <laughs> yeah. When technology works, it's great. But, yeah, no kidding. Um, but, it uh, it was really good. I know you're editing a lot of this stuff out, but maybe, maybe not. I might let oh, this okay. all ride. <laughs> we it was all fun. The tip of fun. the hat, by the way, on your interview with uh, Mike. Oh yeah, Mike, uh, Mike, yeah. You know what? I learned a lot. I did not realize he knew Dave that far back. And mm-hmm. I had met Dave at Toledo and and uh the, the well the Southern Nationals once or twice. Several times I had met him and gotten to know him and talked to him. Um and I used to order from him and I didn't know that uh, Mike knew him that long. Or uh, the formulation, I didn't know that. Didn't know about the PBG. Yeah. Wow. And that, yeah, that see, explains I... that explains a lot of of why uh, Matthew's getting that kind of finish that he's getting too. Oh yeah, he, yeah, he, definitely. He is good stuff. Definitely. So, be- yeah, that that's. Mm. Oh yeah, that's even for me, I mean, I mean, I didn't realize you know, when he and and you know that's what's great about bringing people like him on this show where. It, you know, people need to watch these things. You're going to find out so much great stuff um, that you might miss out on. Is who would have known that that's what his product was and where it's such a high level grade product? Um, yeah. You yeah. know, I, I had been, I hadn't used uh, um, model car world finishes in years. I tried them out years ago. And I, quite frankly, as far as enamels, you know, like I said, I'm, I would never, ever consider using enamels until now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I absolutely agree. And you know, the Superflow car, the, the Buddy Baker, the 200 mile an hour car, uh, Amanda's, uh, the replica of her Cuda, all yeah. of those are done with model car world lacquers. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Every one of them are all model car world lacquers. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, and it's so convenient when you can pull up the website and go to the the 1969 Dodge Daytona uh, record setter or two. Oh. And there it is. There's your. And he color. had the paint. Co- oh There's wow! Your two, your two colors are there. The Superflow pink, the neon pink, the white. Everything was there. So it makes it really easy to do. And their stuff is spot on. The petty colors. Uh, I've got a can um, that I actually got. At uh, I don't know if you can see that, but Petty Enterprise. This was a leftover can of, from Petty Enterprises. Oh, you're kidding me! No, and there's there's the uh, it's RM uh, Diamond, oh. and there's the paint code down there on it. And and but if you look at the model car world, put it up against this can, it's the same stuff. Color match is perfect. So uh, Mike, they so, have done, and, they, and going back to Dave. They've done a great, great, great job. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've used this up since then, and as you can tell, it's empty, but that's my souvenir can. So <laughs> Yeah, you got to hold on to that. Holy uh, cow. A, it, well, that came from the garage there. So Yeah. Can you take a picture of that and send that to me? I, I want to take a yeah, good look. Yeah. That's I'll cool. Back out. I'll set that yeah. aside. And, yeah. Uh, uh, wow, that's for cool. For several people that have sent me private messages about, hey, what's that paint code? And... Um, just shoot them a copy, take a picture up. Yeah. I probably got a picture in the computer. So well, know. what's interesting, if you have the paint code or or you wouldn't you wouldn't happen to have it doesn't have the formula printed out, would it? Because I actually have I don't the, think so. I have I'm the formula sure. from when I worked at, at a paint shop mixing yeah, that yeah. stuff. I mixed some some petty blue up and I I saved the formula where it has X amount of this color, X there was like five colors involved. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, a drop right. of this, a spat of that. And then what I found out at this working at this paint shop is I did some of that and I did some Ford Grabber Blue. And the only difference from what I'd have to go look at them, the only difference between the formulas was the Grabber Blue had just a, a speckling of black into it. Yeah, it is. 
a touch. Yeah, there's it's it's weird. It's not much, but it's, it's but it's a, weird the colors that you mix together to create colors you wouldn't think would be in there. Like you'd be surprised that I I am not saying in petty blue, but there would be like a drop of red in something that you wouldn't even think red would be there. Yeah, and a particular it, shade of gray that when we were repainting yeah. our den, same thing when we were repainting the den, we, when we went to get this particular color, we're watching them mix different colors into it. Yeah, isn't that like, fascinating? Whoa, by that. You're doing what? I, I'm just thinking, you know, little black, little white, little whatever. There's there's the gray I'm looking for. Yeah, oh, exactly. No, they're putting all these other little drops in it. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the perfect color we wanted, so. Yeah. Well, it was like when I was talking about Frank and, you know, you know what a master of color and painting he was. And I go hang out with him in the mixing room in his mixing room at the shop we worked at. And that guy would just, oh, he's a, like a little chemist, you know, just, <laughs> he just knew his stuff. Well, you know, the whole story about that Richie Evans car, you know, that Camaro he did, he took off down to uh, a yeah, guy over America. there to, yeah, he just, he looked at it, came back, built the car, came back the next year, laid it on the, on the real car, put the model on the fender of the real car, and the colors were exact. Yeah. Actually, I have a the picture that, that right me there of it. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that amazed me with that, with that model, though, was it wasn't decals. You look at all that stuff and it wasn't decals. It nope. was painted, masked, yep. and painted. Yep. Masked and painted. Impressive. Wow. Yep. yep. But Frank, but every paint job I ever saw Frank do, that was the way they were. It wasn't oh, just yeah. that car. It was all of them. Um, yeah. And I watched. Camaro. All and I had those things were just wow. Oh yeah, yeah. And I had the wonderful, wonderful privilege of actually watching him do many of those paint jobs and watch. I watched him do all the body work on that Camaro. I watched how he made it. And when you think about how intense the real one with all of that body work, how much body work had to go into that, and he's replicating it in one twenty fifth scale. Oh wow. yeah, yeah. And nailed it, nailed it. So yeah. good. And like I was telling you, as far as the, like back to the, like your Ricky Crouch, uh, um, tribute is Frank and I were doing these two, um, flat nose Monte Carlos and we go, okay, these are going to be like two cars of independent drivers. We had this idea of they'd be white cars, but then I do my kind of version and he do his very simple cars, no flashy paint, but really, you know, just mm. really, really cool looking cars. And he was going to set them up. He had this diorama where he took pictures of his models and we were going to set them up like they were racing together. And we were even putting like the exact same stickers, you know, contingency stickers on them. So they looked like two cars at the same race. And, uh, and, uh, uh team cars or something like that. Kind of team cars or buddy cars where it was like the, the two cars were white. They were low budget guys. So the cars were just right. But he used red for like his numbers and lettering and sponsor, and I did blue. And uh, I, I, uh, he never got it finished. And I have his. I'm going to finish his, and I'm going to finish mine. One right. of these days. Yeah. So I, I, that's something I think I got to get on that this year. When Cotton Owens and was it sixty four, sixty five, something like that? Mm -hmm. Cotton Owens had ran two cars. David Pearson ran the red numbers. Yeah. And it went right out of my head. Ah, uh, who was it that drove the other, the, the black number five? It, they were both white cars. One had black numbers. One had the red numbers. David Pearson run the red numbers. I'm trying to remember. Oh. Oh, man. I don't know why GC uh, Spencer just popped in my head, but it wasn't. No, no. Was it Paul Goldsmith? No, Goldsmith was driving a Plymouth, I think. Yeah, he was. He was driving. Uh, it was his 64 or 65. But anyway, one was the black number five, and then David Pearson was in the red number six. Mm -hmm. But yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. the, back then, team cars weren't that creative. They just. No. It was like Petty and, and Pete Hamilton. You had the red nose on, so the pit team would know which car was coming. Yeah, down. exactly. Was exactly. On the but, Superbirds. Well, I, I remember, you know, years ago when I was working with a guy that we were restoring vintage race cars and one car that he had was the uh the jim hall chaparral camaro that ran in the trans am season in 70 and uh there were multiple cars and the only way they told the difference is one car had um where the head in the headlight covers were just left you know aluminum and the other mm -hmm. car had 
orange painted in the in the uh, in the headlight wow. covers. That's the, that was the only way they could tell the difference that's between the unique. Two. Yeah, that's unique. And one would be number one, and one would be number two, and it would flip flop around. So you never knew which which car would be number one. You know, the drivers would drive one or the other. I would really love to have seen how Frank would have put his twist on, and as well as yours, as far yeah. as the uniqueness of the two cars. Oh yeah, yeah, and his you gotta, is you gotta, to honor Frank. You got to finish that. I oh, I'm going to. I'm going to. I was so glad that 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 model survived, and it's probably ninety percent done, maybe. So uh, most of it will be Frank. I just kind of got to do the final assembly of it, and then mine. Mine's in actually. Something happened to mine, and the decals got wrecked, and I finally got a set of replacement decals for it because they were, I was using the decals out of that. Remember the uh, uh, when the 75 Laguna was re-released by uh, a Model King? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those decals I used off of that. There were, like, some blue decals, and there was a blue number 12, and I just used the number 2. And uh, um, there was some trucking company trucking fleet company sponsorship i threw on there it looked like low budget like in the neighborhood yeah the Saturday next door neighbor hey would you, would you yeah. sponsor my sponsor my race car i'm gonna go try run winston cup that kind of stuff happened even in the early 80s after doing my uh um 40 forward um Channel car, so to speak. I was thinking about taking one of these new Camaros when they come out from Salvino's and making a. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how many new 007 is sponsoring a car? <laughs> heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. One of these days, doing a, doing I got to do one too. too. <laughs> I gotta, if I get some nice decals made of my my logo and stuff, I'll probably be doing some sort of race car that, you know, I got to sponsor. sponsor. You know what I'm going to do with, with when I get a hold of one of those kits I got planned for? Oh, uh, what? I'm going to do a City Chevrolet. I'm going to do a cold trick of ah. City Chevrolet with the numbers pushed forward and the and the the City Chevrolet logo on the door. You know, yeah. fantasy, doing fantasy cars like this. I love doing fantasy cool. cars. Uh, shout out to Al uh, <clears throat> Molsetter in. Uh, I think Lexington, South Carolina. I, I was talking to him at a show um, last May, and I told him, I said, I got an idea on how to do something, but I'm not sure how I want to approach this. He said, well, why don't you do this? And I'm like, oh, that's perfect. So uh, I want to do a fantasy uh, cold trickle car. Uh, well, let's not say a car. It, it's a race vehicle. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That yes. Is, yeah, that is very unique. Uh, yeah. And it, it's another fantasy thing, but I think it's going to, uh, or I hope it's going to bring some smiles because even oh, thinking yeah. about it is just a fun thing to do. Yeah, but, that, uh, that's going to be, an, I know I what you, I did share with you. What you you've talking. told me, but I know what it is. It's cool. You want to tell <laughs> the folk out there or wait till it happens? <laughs> well, I'll give them a hint. I've taken uh, a Cadillac Escalade nose and grafting it onto a uh, one of the old Craftsman Truck Series trucks. <laughs> We're going to have that'll a Cadillac be, Escalade. That'll um, be killer. But that'll be a cold trickle thing too. But it and it is it's fun, and that's what this hobby's about. Oh gosh, yeah. That's why we're doing this right now? It's yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's it's so so. And I'll tell you, this forty Ford build. So re-energized me. It was nice getting it done. First of all, it just helped out a lot. I had such a good time that it really has revitalized my building. I've really been in a slump for over a decade. Haven't built, haven't finished a lot of models in a while, and it's really hard for me to sit at the, the bench and and build. And one thing that I noticed that happened with this forty Ford build, and 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 I know all of you guys had a big part of this too, doing it. You know, just like how it affected uh, Matthew and his building was I would find myself at work thinking about the model. I would find myself at the grocery store thinking about the model, thinking about the build. Ooh, ooh, I got an idea how I'm going to do this and that. And we're also running into issues that normally would have killed a project for me, ending up making it better. Better. Yeah. All these happy mistakes were happening that the model turned out exactly, exactly what I wanted. And I am absolutely thrilled with it. So I'm ready to jump. I'm going to, I got, I got it sitting right there. I've got the, uh, 
the uh, um, I don't know if you see that uh, right here. Um, I'm going to get back on that 64 Oldsmobile that I was doing videos on. That that mm -hmm. I want to wrap up. I'm excited about that. And then after speaking to uh, Mike there from uh, MCW, and uh, you saw that that Impala I was talking about, and I got all excited about. I ordered I ordered one yesterday. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting that Impala, Impala. And if you saw the Impala that I showed a picture of, a real one. I'm building that car. I, that car was on YouTube, oh. and it, and about I don't know seven years ago. And I was like, oh, if I could have a '69 Impala um, kid, I would so build that car. And wow, uh, he said he had those. And and I went on the website and I saw, oh, they only have three left. Buy it. I don't care. I'm buying it. <laughs> wow. So I'm looking forward to getting that. I think I'm probably going to jump on. That's the one that I'm gonna. I got to do the BF Goodrich wheels mm -hmm. you know and i got uh, tires and i'm gonna i want to find just like the right i'm probably going to use na old nascar steel wheels mm -hmm. or something like that because i want them to be real deep and then i'm going right. to use the uh the caps out of the uh um the revel um nova copo the copo nova i think it's i don't know it's that green one right here thing right there there <laughs> That has it just has those dog dish hubcaps. I love that look. Yeah. So, so yeah, that got me all excited. So I'm looking forward to getting that resin body, and I got well, quite I a few others. That I'm not the only one that likes the dog dish look. Love I've them. always liked that. Love them. Um, uh, of course, when I was in high school, I had to have the mags, so I had to save up the money to buy the mags and all that stuff. And I look yeah. back at the pictures of the car before I had those when I just had the steelies with the the dog dish hubcaps on them. And mm. I'm like, you know what? That that looked so cool. It uh, did, but back in the day, it was so good. Yeah, everybody else was running uh, mags, so you had to have mags too. And I, oh I was, yeah, I was no different. Yeah, yeah, me too. I did that. I went through that stint. But like when I had my Chevelle wagon, the car, you know, that was my toy hot rod or whatever before I got my my Fox Body Mustang. When I was building that car, that was a look I wanted. But I, I always loved on Chevelle's, I loved the Corvette rally wheels, the, mm -hmm. the wider rally wheels. I got a set of those and I didn't put, I never liked the beauty ring. I hate those things. I wouldn't put the beauty ring on, but I put the cap well, on. There's a place for a beauty ring. When you get yeah. back in the 40s, eh, yeah. back, I think they look good on those. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I didn't. I just didn't bother with those. Plus, oddly enough, they were expensive. I didn't have any, and to go buy them, I looked. At, they were just too expensive anyways. But I, uh, um, I didn't want to do that, but I put the cap on. And I had found there was a company that was making dog dish hubcaps that fit the Corvette rally wheel because there wasn't any for a long time. Mm. And I was going to get a set of those, but I ended up selling the car because a guy offered me really, really dumb money for it. <laughs> and so I did that. I kind of wish I would have kept that. I missed that car, but it, that that was cool. That look, I love this. I love steel wheel look with with just a. Mm -hmm. Whereas Dennis Smith always called them poverty caps, <laughs> poverty caps. He says, "Ah, that's a rich runner. You got to." He was like, "White leather tires and black steel wheels." <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a ridge runner. Bro. Yeah, that, that's a good look. That's awesome a really stuff. good look. It really yeah. is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's awesome. I mean, that that's what's so fun about the hobby too is just uh just getting all the fantasies out, you know, we love cars. Yep. So you definitely can't own all these things. You have an idea. It's, it's great hot rod building. Are you going to get in this? I think Brian and, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm forgetting names again. Uh, the small scale build that they're going to be doing in, starting in Feb February. Yes. I think I am because I just so happen to have a little Porsche that i'm gonna do ah yeah i i uh he he mentioned it to me we were, we were talking and uh i look over there and i go i don't know there was this kid i don't know why i bought it andy andy actually made a video of it because it was an old kit that he got in a collection he just was showing a couple this is a while ago a, a different collection not the big one from last summer 
and uh, just showing how unique and cool this kit was. And I come walking in, he just done the video, had the kit sitting there. I go, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> and he, he originally was going to keep it and hold on to it because it was so unique. But it's, uh, it's uh, I got it over here. What is it? I can't see. It's, a, it's like a 50s Porsche. It's kind of like the, the mid-engine version of the one that James Dean crashed. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not a, no, it's got a roof, but it's, it's got those type of wheels, but it's that vintage yeah, yeah. kind of the, the, the body portion is kind of shaped like the, the roadster, but it's not a roadster. It's, it's mid engine. It's, it, uh, it's a Le Mans race car, I believe, mm -hmm. you know, silver. I, I've that, got a lot of 32nd scale and I do mean a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, of the nascars 30 second scale NASCAR. Oh, yeah that's a, that's a different subject but i'll get to that another time but uh amanda was in walmart and she shot me a picture of she said you interested in this and it was a 30 second scale um 32 ford oh I said, I yeah said, get it yeah uh, didn't you send me a picture that, of that? that engine but uh so i got that and i've got a couple of other 30 second scales that i've never even thought about doing anything with and then i've done those 87th scale which you've seen mm -hmm. uh, but then I ran across one that, that oh, I sent you a picture of. It's a Z gauge, uh, one 220 scale. Oh, uh, the, the thing is, is yeah, just uh, <laughs> you put it on the roof of a, of a 30 second scale and it just, yeah. Oh, boy. But, and I thought about doing one of those, but the thing is that the brass is it, in its brass. It's oh, a kit cool. on sprue, but it's a uh, brass sprue. But it's just so tiny. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and build one, but I don't think it's going to be. And if nothing else, like I said, I'll put it on the roof of the yeah <laughs> the other one. A model, a model car of a model car. I guess, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have. I think you and I have talked about these before because you had some. But I have a few of these uh, little HO scale. I think it's yeah for HO trains. These scale yeah. kit model car kits for train layouts. Yeah. And I've got a couple of 40 Ford ones. There's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that one. Oh, I can there. see it. Yeah. I'm and that's the, the one. Head. And it actually comes with a flathead. The hood pops up. I was getting ready to say, and under the hood is a flathead, believe mm -hmm. it or not. And this thing is, as you can see, that thing is, what is it? Yeah. Inch and a half. Mm hmm. Um, hood comes off and I rested this one out and put it like in a field. You got one of the tires and pieces of wood and lumber laying around. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's got a flathead in it. Uh, yeah, it does. It has a flathead in it. And I've got a couple of those. Um, and I also there's found the, there's my coupe. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, those are fun. It's something different. It's, it's cool. It's to just do. some little, yeah, yeah something, something cool to do. Yeah, I got uh, a couple of those, and then I found um, a, an accessory pack for HO scale cars that were like mag wheels and wide tires. Well, and that's stuff. what's on the green one. I bought a pack of those to put on. Yeah, the green one. yeah. Was it like in a little red box and the, the a window in front that just showed you all the you could see all the wheels? I think this was just a bag that had. Oh, no, really? I think. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, they they were really cool. Yeah, and those things those are kids come with stock hey. wheels and uh, the stock wheels and upcaps. Yeah, so, this is speaking a, of dog dishes, so <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. And what an idea for a video! We might have to, <laughs> we might have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking, by the way, with uh, Brian BG yep. about that one with the flathead. I told him I said uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to wire the engine. LOL. And then I, I told him, I said, I think, I think a hair would be about the right size. He said, if you're going to detail an engine with a hair, I'd pay good money for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, I built one of those kits. It's happen. <laughs> I built one of those kits in the late eighties. Actually, I, I, I might even still have it somewhere. And I remember doing the engine and thinking about wiring it, How you thinking about wiring it, but I, uh, that's uh, I didn't have the huevos rancheros. <laughs> <laughs> Did not have it either. 
Yeah, that's got, that, it's just that so would much be fun. Difficult to say the least. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes you just got to sit around and go, you know, life's too short. I got to have some yeah, fun. Why in the world am I thinking about it? And you know what? I do that with, with projects now. I'll look at something and I'll go, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, I remember one time I was doing a tutorial in Scale Auto on detailing carburetors. Um, and all of a sudden, Matt, you there? Uh, yeah, something just happened here. Yeah, something just popped up. But a gift from the, running out of time. We've moved the 40-minute time. has a 40-minute time limit now. We've removed the 40-minute time limit on your group meeting. I think we're still good. I think we All are. All right, there we go. Okay. Anyway, that I will let it out. What are we just talking about now? <laughs> uh, oh, I was doing that tutorial on uh, carburetors. Yeah. And I got looking at one of the carburetors and between the gasket, the underneath the seal gasket, the restrictor plate, uh, the linkage, the side bolts, the top vents, the screw, uh, the center screw for the breather, the washer down on the bottom of that, where I drilled out and mm -hmm. used the syringe stuff to make the Venturis down in the carburetor barrels. Uh, after I counted everything up, the fuel lines, the nuts, the, each of the nuts, each of the bolts, there was 21 parts on one carburetor. And, and in fact, I think I was sharing that with Brian. I was going, what are you doing? Who's going to see this stuff? Exactly. That's I'm a like, model in itself. But it's just, I'm like, it's 21 fun. parts on a carburetor. What? Have I lost my mind? <laughs> Nobody's going to see any of this stuff. Yeah, but, but it looked and, cool, and, didn't and, it? And again, it goes back to, but I know it's there. <laughs> yeah, that old gag or... You know, I, I, um, I, I'll never get, Frank told me something that Augie Escano said to him, treat every part of the model. You and I talked about that as its own model. Yeah. Yeah. You take that and, starter and you do it as it's a model of that starter. Yeah. Just like a real starter. And, um, but does it take more time? Yes, absolutely. Um, nobody may see this stuff. It's like the radiator thing. Mm -hmm. Um, who really pays any attention to a model car radiator? But for me, I know it's there. I get that good feeling of knowing it's there. Yeah. If a judge never sees it, if, uh, and, and it's, it's not about the show anyway. No. It, it, I'm doing it for me. Yeah. You're enjoying it. That, and that's the trick. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. people stress themselves to do stuff like that, thinking they have to. I've seen that happen and a burn a model builder down. It's like you don't do this stuff if you are enjoying doing it. Like I've done, I I've done a few radiators like that. It never got noticed, but I didn't care. It looked cool to me. When you do point it out, people go, "Oh, it's like you're freaking." You know, you you think it'd be simple that that uh, um, car you you had at Atlanta that uh, all you know just being built, petty Pontiac. Um, Mm -hmm. it looks like oh that must have been real simple but then you start looking at what you did and all oh, the little yeah, detail to make it look simple and to me i mean seeing that thing in person what was so mind-blowing is it especially that i don't know it's just like my brain is saying this is made of metal and i know that it was plastic but my brain is saying this is all metal it's all sheet metal even the especially the uh the the um uh, whatever that puts over the 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 shape of the car. We'll test the shape oh, of the, car. the, the template. template. Yeah, the body template. The, that template. Uh, that, that stuff was. No matter how much I looked at that template, it kept saying in my brain, "That's a piece of metal." I I couldn't. I <laughs> all if I didn't think all about it, way. that's a piece of metal. All clad. <laughs> yeah, I, I was so impressed with, with that. That's the great thing with some of these metal finishes by about everybody, not just all yeah. clad. But, yeah. uh, I favor all clad. A lot of people don't care for it, but um, I've used it for so many years since the first year it came out. Mm -hmm. I've just gotten used to it, and I like the I like the finish of it. But I also like yeah. those old Custer's metalizers, the buffing metalizers, too. I oh, yeah, you can do some too. nutty stuff with that. But I'll tell you what. Best compliment in Atlanta, the best compliment, the best one i had was a guy standing there um um i can't remember who it was i was talking to somebody and uh a guy 
was talking to two other guys uh, standing by the car down there, and he made the comment, I can't believe he got all of that metal bent to those shapes. And I'm thinking, yep. if he thinks that car is metal, that's the best compliment he could possibly give me. Yep. Well, uh, you know, and that's why I'm saying I knew it wasn't, you know, you and I were talking, before we got out there, you were sending me pics. I saw the stuff before you put the paint on it. I know it was plastic, and my brain would, wouldn't would accept it. It was I'm, what I'm seeing. My eyes and my brain were fighting. I couldn't look at your model anymore. Your model just frustrated me because well, things couldn't jive together. <laughs> I had a great idea on how I wanted the outside to look. And then I started thinking because of all of these panels that were removed, the inside body panels had to match the outside body panels. Mm -hmm. Then yep. I'm thinking, oh boy, you just keep biting off more than you can. Yeah, do. yeah. You took you took so then I had to go back and mask off and redo the inside <laughs> to match the outside because uh, it was going to be exposed. Where with most of the race cars in that era, you know, you had paint on the inside, all one color, the gray. And then the exterior was its but this had to match everything. Each panel had to match the inside to the outside. So you it turned out to be uh, you know what I'm doing? I'm opening up a big can of worms right there. <laughs> that's what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, every time I turn around, I'm like, well, if that's not going to look right, if I don't do this, then I start thinking if the Clicos are stuck in there, they have to have just a little bit, just a fraction sticking out the backside to expand and hold them. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh, but it's all fun. But you know what? Well, I was going to say, then the challenge was, okay, how am I going to do it? All right, here's how I'm going to do it. And then to execute it sometimes is the hardest yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but at the same time, I, I had a ball doing that. And yeah, course, I know. You were, if you this were... stuff ever gets to where it's not fun, yeah, what's the point? why do we do it? Um, yeah, exactly. You the challenge of it is, is the big thing. And yeah. uh, mixing up old school and, and modern hot rod stuff and the 40 Ford was, was for me, that was fun. Yeah. You looked like you were having a ball with it. You just kept sending me, check this out. Look at this. Check this out. <laughs> it's like, and, and you know, everybody, we were all doing that to each other and it just charged everybody out. You know, oh, even yeah. like BG, it even took him to another level. He, when he first started it, he was, I'm just going to build it out of the box. All of a sudden, wait, I got this engine in the, my junk box that has this crazy <laughs> intake. And then, wait, I got this. And wait, I got this. And then, you know, everybody. Everybody just, did went, an went, I, I don't think I don't think anybody did, a, did an out-of-the-box version. Uh, I don't think so. No. I don't think so. No. I think mine's like the closest to an out-of-the-box. But, you know, you know big thing to even out-of-box um, uh, these kits are such classic. You do them out of box and do a good clean build. Hey, yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. I mean, it's mine, gonna... mine really is. I didn't do any kit bashing. I don't, I think the only kit bashing I did was wheels and tires didn't come from the kit, but I did a mm -hmm. lot of messing and fiddling and, and of course detailing and stuff. So I wouldn't really call it a box stock build, but uh, yeah, but isn't it fun? But I was at, I was after something, and after doing it, it's like okay, I need to do another forty four this year, and I got to take it in a different direction, go next level. And I'm yeah. going to got a plan, <laughs> <laughs> got a plan for a couple. BG, he was saying he never thought of it before, and after he got done with that, he immediately got a hold of another kit. And he's going to be doing something. So he's got that. something unique too. Yeah, I really not enough. To do, do one of my dad's thirty nine uh, two door sedan. Oh yeah, really yeah. Because yeah, that, that thing, would be cool. sometime back in the, I want to say it was the mid to late sixties, he went to a junkyard and found a three ninety, mm. and he and my uncle kind of tinkered with that three ninety. Then they dropped it in that thirty nine four. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Wow. That's some hot rodding. That's some hot yeah, rodding. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Did you Have you ever built the Ravel version of the 44? I have not. I have one, uh, both the, the convertible and the hardtop, mm -hmm. but I have never built one. But I've yeah. looked at it, and I like it. Yeah, I, like I do. It. I want to take a crack at it. Good-looking kid. 
I started one year when they first came out, I went and bought one of each because I cut the front fenders off of the oh, convertible. You were standard. You were going I'm to swapping them. them. Yeah, going to do a standard versus a... Yeah, well, because deli- yeah, the because the coupe came as a standard and the That's and right. the convertible came as the deluxe, so I want to do a deluxe coupe. So I'm gonna. Now that's a cool idea. Yeah. What did you ever mess it? with? Did you ever mess with the uh, monogram pickup, the forty pickup? No, I haven't yet. I have one in the stash back here, bought for that reason. Got a plan for that. I can't remember what the plan was. I think I, I wanted I to. One. I've got one, but I was really back when I first got it. I, I when I was going through the parts, I was really disappointed in what I was seeing. It's a janky kit. I, I eh, and maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe I shouldn't be. Um, yeah, I've seen some buildups that really are kind of yeah. cool, and I think that pickup is sharp. It is. I, there were two of them at Atlanta, and I was looking at them, going, "Ooh, ooh it got me thinking again." Because I can't a hundred percent remember. I had a reason why I bought the thing. Because and I'm talking an idea I had in the late '80s when I was I building these 44s. I think I wanted to build a pickup and a trailer to carry one of my other 44s on. I think ah. I had I had a thing about that, and it was a whole reason why I bought that kit. And it's just been sitting there ever since. That's a cool idea. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to do a you know the thing that was messing with me is that is 24th scale and all the other ones are 25th scale, but you know, get the heck over it. I I think they'll look fine next to when you look at them. I'll tell you what the grill, uh, I used uh, model car garages, uh, photo etch grill Mm -hmm. in in the sedan. Let me tell you, I was so impressed with that. I went ahead and ordered the 39 and they make an entire detail set for the, Mm. I think it'll work for either, either one, but just the grill on that thing impressed me enough that I ordered the 39, the yep. vertical slat 39 grill. Yeah. Uh, man, uh, there's just so much out there you can do. Oh, yeah. You know, I I, I had never, I always gone, eh, about the, the model car garage grill for a 40 um, until I saw yours. And then you got me thinking, I think I need to get one of those because it looked really, really good in there. Well, it's easy it to be really in. good. Honestly, yeah. all I did is wrap it around an X-Acto blade. Yeah. I just center it up, wrap it right around an exacto blade, and and then let it spring back out. And it was just right. The shape, yeah, it looked great. I mean, I saw a close up picture of it. It looked fantastic, and yeah. and it made me go, "Oh, I should get one." I just never thought. I don't know. That was one I love. And don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm not saying it in bagging about model car garage by any means because I've got a lot of model car garage stuff, and I buy their stuff mainly for the grills for a lot of kits i i yeah, yeah. i love their grills and uh that one was one that didn't really light me up that i needed to have and now i saw yours and now i gotta have one mm, it, it, so it, it flies i guess fits beautifully it's just, just really nice yeah that's cool that's really cool yeah though gosh yeah these 44s what a I'm so glad you came up with the idea. It, it, um, well, I thought about that. What You and I had talked about it before, and then I started thinking, you know what? That was probably one of the, the best-selling, as I recall, I, I heard somewhere, one of the best-selling classic of the old, old, old kits out there of any. Um, so I thought, well, you know, let's do it. And, they, and to this day, they're still punching it out. That's right. Yeah. They just recently, there's, there's one that I think that's still being sent, you know, injected and sent out. Yep. They're always coming up with something. But yeah. Again, that was, that was an inspirational thing. You can't wear out a classic. <laughs> no, nah, that one was just done well. I know there's a lot of things that are about it, you know, cause it's old technology, a few things, but, uh, um, I think, one of the things everybody kind of agrees with is it's really not into scale. Might right. be a little bit smaller, whatever scale that might be. Don't matter. It's still the proportions are so nice. It looks just. It looks great. It does. It looks great. Now what we got to do is uh, everybody who's going to Atlanta, who was in this this group build, we should see if we could have a little spot on the table when we bring them all to Atlanta and, and have them. Display, yeah, 
Yeah. I think we should do that. I was talking to BG about it because he says he's not going next year. But he says, if you do that, would you take it? Take mine? Absolutely, I'll take yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Cause... yeah, I remember him saying that they had uh, already had plans for that. Yeah, yeah, they've got some. Next year, but. They got um, their, their plans with their vacations for next year. But uh, um, I know there's a couple of guys really ser here really seriously thinking it. Like, I know uh, um, well, James Chuck from Chuck's. James yeah, is James too, Chuck it? from Chuck's Hobby Spot. You know, they both built 40s, so they got those to bring. That wasn't Chuck's crazy, man. Yeah, wow. Black, and he took on Black, that crazy guy. But, but yeah, but look at that Black. You know, if, if Black is done right, it's my favorite color on a car. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, I know, if it's, it's done it's, right. It's, wow. It's done right. Yeah, I, I've already. Such depth, and it was gorgeous yeah and those wheels really set it off yeah yeah he did that right i put the word out to all those guys that are you know here so we've got there's me bg louie from autistic modeler uh james from uh scale model experiment and of course chuck chuck's hobby spot we all did our 40s so that's five 40s here in this town and i right. told them all you got to bring them uh you've got mine then you've got Yep. Tim, Tim's and Matthews. So there's eight. Yeah. And then there was a few uh, other, there were some new guys that jumped in. And then did you, and I didn't, I didn't realize that Pat Redman was kind of doing one and he was like, dude, why didn't you say Pat something? I've been on it late, but yeah. 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 And his is gold with black fenders. And, and Pat, you got to, you know, <laughs> put some pictures up on the, on the, on the group yes he does yeah he's got if you if any of you don't know about this pat redman he's got a channel go check it out it's just called pat redman yeah uh, heck i'll put his logo right there and uh, say, and he's got the coolest logo yeah yeah he does and yeah he's doing this really cool he's finishing up because he got a late start in it that's so what it inspired him he built it awesome he's part of it so a um great guy a great yeah guy. oh yeah uh, he's i think the first time i met him was in toledo in oh five oh six something like that yeah very, very briefly that's when you get when you get to big events like that you're meeting one person and somebody comes oh, up yeah. to you about something else and you know you're just all over the place it's oh, like yeah. we talked about even in atlanta no it's a uh, blur <laughs> for everybody that we did meet then we found out that there were guys there that we didn't meet i know i know i talked to so many guys How afterwards is that yeah, uh, that's really frustrating too. Yeah, but uh, but it's cool, you know. I'll be there next year, and hopefully, get to talk to everybody. Yep, yep. definitely, definitely. But uh, yeah, the uh, 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 that the forty, it did that. <laughs> that just made that kit. This whole experience just made brought that kit up at a whole nother reason for me to personally have really strong feelings about it. A little bit kind too strong feelings. Refresh the love that we have for those old. Yeah, kids. it I sure think. did. That was just a ball. We had such a good time. But uh, yeah, I told all the guys here local to have them. Uh, bring it to the next meeting because I'm going to do a video featuring our five builds. And because uh, mm -hmm. gosh, everybody, gets, you know, and we were talking about how this, how this, what it did for every guy, inspirationally, Louis Meyer. Uh, yeah, and I, I said that in that when we had him on uh, the model car guys is he did I think that was his model that was his next level build and and his uh, his forty four that he did was probably his best paint job up to that date and since then he's been laying nicer paint jobs on his models since doing that yeah. forty. Rest my case. That's I right. rest my case. That is the model kit. It's got magical powers. Well, with this one, the flathead was my big challenge because yeah. I thought, okay, how am I going to do this with the carburetors? How am I going to run fuel lines and linkage on this side and not have them overlapping each other? And then I've got a fuel block to put back there. Then I've got this. Then I've got that. And when yeah. I've done a flathead, I've usually not had that issue because I didn't use this type of carburetor. Uh, I didn't use the type of oil filter I did this time. So it was pushing it up a little bit. Yeah. But it was fun. To, the challenge of it was just so much fun. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And um, 
and it worked. Yeah, it that's worked. that's those, why those few, those few times that, that words kind of went, God, how can put this out by? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. to figure out how to do something. And man, I can make up words, man. Me... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I... My favorite thing, if you watch my blooper reel, you, you saw what watch, I had... Watch, I stole your blooper reel. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you did, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, man. You like how I put you in there? <laughs> yeah, I did. That was cute. And it, it kind of fit. But when I was picking up the stuff with the tweezers and dropped it like four times, and you saw <laughs> me throw the tweezers. Picked it up with my fingers and dropped it. And what came out of my mouth, that's my favorite saying usually. Is, <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yep. <laughs> oh, that's probably the one that really, that one, that one, I really let out a laugh when I was watching that. Well, Amanda, that was so that's funny. Her, that's her, her cue to leave the room is if she goes, hears me go, Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to say what my phrase is. Oh, okay. It <laughs> comes out of this room because, you know, this is a family friendly show. <laughs> <laughs> so hmm. use your imagination kind of thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Hopefully, I, Felix isn't around. <laughs> yeah, because those little sponges will pick it up. Oh, yeah. Tell uh, me about it. Well, yeah, he did yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh oh. Yep. Yep. Oh, well. He said he said a word that he heard. The other word for butt or posterior. Or I remember backside. seeing a, a blooper years ago. It was an old black and white blooper on some blooper show. And uh, the guy was demonstrating how to put, believe it or not, a model airplane kit together. It was like a snap tight. It oh, was yeah. Black, black and white. And the guy's fiddling with it. And he's he's like, and all the kids have to do is click, click. Click there, here, there. And, and he couldn't do it. He couldn't get it together. And he says, <laughs> and finally, the guy just had a quick wit about him. He says, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very educational kid. It teaches children how to cuss. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, boy. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, I'd like to see that. And while he's doing it, he's still trying to get it together, and he can't get it together. That's when he said that. I thought I was going to lose it. Oh, that's, that's oh, hilarious. That's hilarious. Yeah. Man, well, I tell you what, we have been going for a while, over an hour. Wow, um, I'm sure everybody enjoyed this. They're probably screaming at their TV, wanting to, wanting to get their piece in. <laughs> uh, I, you know, this is a this is something I want to do with the uh, talking to everybody out there. Put in the comments below what you thought about this. I want to do more unpodcasts like this you know i'm still going to do like what i've been doing where i'm introduced introducing people and also like like the last one that i did with uh with mike gas uh introducing people with products and stuff and other things in the hobby but i also want to do a lot of unpodcasts with my buddies that we just talk about model cars and and uh uh you know all of a sudden make get invaded by another one of the guys <laughs> if, if their stuff would work and yeah. uh um you know, I just, uh, this was something that when I conceived this whole show was to also do just a little gab session with my, with my friends. So hope you enjoyed this. And, uh, well, hey, I've still, had yeah, I, I know I enjoyed it. You and Matt had a, but you know, we, this is like us talking on the phone. Uh, we yeah. do, this is how we talk on the phone, but, uh, um, you know, we, we have to stick to business here. Because we're still, you know, got to be professional. So you know what that means, Mark. You're still the guest on my show. So there's something you got to do. Yeah. And, you know, I really, really, really liked what Mike had to say. When you cut your <laughs> fingers off, glue them back on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, beautiful. But, and, and actually, very true. I have cut my finger, <laughs> almost a fingertip off one time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I super glued the edges back on. So, hey, I think we go. all have. <laughs> hey, so you're that, not a modeler. If you haven't shed blood, <laughs> you got to shed blood to be part to. of the brotherhood, so to speak. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, oh, no, I man. Did. We got to glue those fingers together and chop that styrene. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, we, we will see you in the next video. And here's the producers. Yes.